In this video, we're going to do a short introduction to the scanner class and how we use it to get user input. So here I have a empty Java program made up of a single class and a main method. To get user input, we're going to use a scanner object. So I declare a scanner variable by saying scanner, and I'll just call it SCNR, and that's equal to a new scanner. That's how we create a new object. And it takes a parameter of where you want to read the user input. We're going to read the input directly from the user from the console. And for that, we want to read from system.in. Now you'll notice I'm getting some underlines here, and there's an error warning here that says scanner cannot be resolved to a type. If I hover over the underlined words, you'll notice there's 21 fixes available. Typically, the first one will get you what you want, but you always want to be careful that you're doing the correct thing. So don't just click on something to get your error cleared. You want to make sure you're picking something correctly. So in this case, I know I want to use a Java scanner, and the scanner is in the Java util package, so I want to import Java util. And so you can see this line up here, and I could have typed that at first to indicate that I was going to be using a scanner, or once I saw that error, as you saw, I was able to resolve it. So now you notice I have a warning, not an error, and it says the value of the local variable is never used, and there's also a resource leak. We'll get to that. I can use it by first asking the user for a number, and now to read the number, I'm going to say scanner, and when I hit the dot here, it's going to give me all the options I have, and in this case, I know I want to say next int because an integer is what I want to read in, but I need a variable to put that integer in, so I'm going to declare an integer here, and then I'll say that that number is equal to whatever number scanner reads from the user. I can also read a string or a sentence. Now here I need a string. So let's declare a string variable and I can say sentence is equal to scanner dot and to read a full sentence, a full line of input from the user, I say next line. Now, if I did something like num scanner dot next line, that's going to give me a warning. If I hover over, it's going to say, hey, I can fix this. I can change the type of num to string. This is why you have to be careful not to blindly click whatever the fix is. I don't want to change num to a string because I want num to be an integer. And I can just delete this entire line because I was just doing it to get that warning. So now I have a number in a sentence, and now I can use those values somewhere. If you'll notice, I'm getting the warning that we're never actually using it. So I'll print out the number and I'll print out the sentence. So here's my program, and you'll notice I'm still getting a warning, and it says resource leak, scanner is never closed. Now, one of the fixes here is to add suppressed warnings. Well, I don't want to do that because it's telling me there's a problem. I don't want to say ignore it, so I need to think about how to fix it. And if I read this carefully, resource leak for scanner is never closed. So that tells me I need to close the scanner, and this tells Java I'm done with that user input, so close that connection down. There are situations where if you leave these things open, you can have what's called a resource leak in more complicated programs. So it's always good to get in the habit of not having any errors, of course, in your code, because then it won't compile, but also no warnings, because usually those indicate something is wrong. Now, because of how this program is structured, not closing the scanner wouldn't have any impact because my program is over at this point. It gets closed automatically. But if this was being used as part of a bigger program and there was a method somewhere that was opening this scanner and I didn't close it, I could eventually have a resource leak. So it's good to get in the habit of closing all the resources that you open. So now let's run this to see if it works. And it's asking me for a number. I'll say 421. And it wants a sentence. And you can see I have a bug because it didn't actually ever wait for me to prompt the sentence. And the reason for that is next line reads the rest of the user's input. Well, this just read a number, so there was something left on the input. So what I should do is, since this was all I wanted to read from that particular line, I can add another scanner next line here, and that'll actually wipe out any user input. Notice I'm not assigning it to a variable. That's because I don't care what else the user puts on that line. And then I'll run this, and I'll enter a number and a sentence. And you can see here's my number and my sentence. So keep in mind, anytime you use one of the next methods, it doesn't clear the entire line of input. And so you may say, well, that's all I entered. And that's true, but it only got the number. You can think of it as it didn't get that enter when I pressed enter to tell it I was done with my input. 
And I'll do another video that goes further into the difference between next and next line and how those interact. But this is an example of how you get user input in Java using the scanner class.